Hey there, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about 24. Yes, a show from all the way back to 2001. I know what you're wondering. Why would you talk about a show that's that old? Um, I don't know. I really never watched it, and some people in my Discord were like, it's a fun watch. So I'm like, sure. And I gave it a shot. And am I glad I did? Wow. It is a treat. And one thing I really noticed is that it's scientifically designed to make boomers cream cheese their pants. I've talked to a few people when I started watching it, and both of them said their dads were obsessed with it. One claimed that their dad thought they were Jack Bauer because he had multiple cell phones. He was just a degenerate. It happens, I guess. But not only is the show for that, this show has won many awards. Four, music composition, sound editing, sound mixing, stunt coordination, supportive actress, directing, outstanding drama series, and of course, outstanding lead actor, Kiefer Mother f Sutherland. And it's funny, when I think of Kiefer Sutherland, I always think of him as David in The Lost Boys, because that was my first like big introduction to him, and I love that movie. So when I think of Kiefer, I think of that it's funny, it's such a big jump, and what really made him very popular. Because I don't, who cares what else is in? There's 24 and The Lost Boys. Yes. The show is unique because each season takes place in one single day, which I don't think has ever been done again. And they even did little time jumps for commercial breaks. Even though, you know, it would just cut to the next scene. It's still good thinking. I like it. It's creative. I like it. It is a great concept. It gives you more tension. Makes it feel more real. Because other shows would be like, what day is it? Who the hell knows? But now you get it to the minute of where you are and when you are. Which is pretty cool. The only issue with this, it's a good idea on paper. But it kind of puts you in a hole. Because you have to keep it, like, intense for 24 episodes. That's a lot. Considering a lot of shows are like eight episodes nowadays, 24 40 minute episodes, there's a lot of commercials. You have to start at 100, which this show does, and you have to maintain 100 or go higher because you dip down and it's kind of like, oh, that episode was a waste of time. Who cares? We 24 episodes, wire for bull, like most shows. But the amount of absolutely insane things that this show throws at you, I literally was just laughing to myself with no one around me. And one thing you can't forget, that this is all one day. So anything Jack Bauer, Kiefer, does, it's all on the same day. And season one starts at midnight. So he's already had a full day of being awake and doing stuff. And then his real day starts. You never see him like, I don't know, eat. Or be like, hold on a second, Nina, I have to go to the bathroom. None of that. So he's just holding it in for 24 hours. Just, it's pretty intense. But in 24 hours, you get to see him run around, drive, talk on the phone. Hey. Threaten a teenager over the phone. Don't screw with me, Vincent. Shoot someone with a dart in his office. Fix your hair. And more. So much more. That's literally in the first, like, five minutes of <laughs> the first episode. And while I could sit here and tell you but tell you i'll show you the following video takes place during midnight and 1 a.m on the day of the california presidential primary this video occurs in real time hello it's danny alex here today we're gonna Jump into episode one of 24, our first character, Victor Rovner. This is a bad picture. You can't even see it anyway. It's fine. He only lasts like 30 seconds. He says one line, and his name is included, which is why he has a full name. Victor Rovner. He sweatily sends a message about an apparent hit, and you hear people knocking on the door, and then you never see him again. So... That message is received by Richard Walsh. He is at a party, apparently, at midnight. Next up, we have David Cherry Palmer. David's running for president. This is the target of the apparent hit. 
with them is their assistant, Patty. Next, we cut to a house. And in this house lives our main character, Jack Bauer. Daughter, Kim Bauer. Wife, Terry Bauer. And for some reason, Jack and Kim are playing chess at midnight. Very weird. On a school night of all nights. And one thing Jack says that's really funny is Kim says, I'm glad to see you back. Have a good night. And he says, me too, sweet. Me too, sweet. What does that mean? Literally 30 seconds later, mom calls her sweet pea. Sweet pea. So he just forgot to say pea. So I like to think he's just creepy. He says, me too, sweet. He's just talking about himself. And then have a good sleep. Who talks like that? Have a good sleep. Like, is he okay? And then Kim just flat out ignores Terry. Completely. So, obviously, there's some tension. Moments later, Kim sneaks out of the house. Jack is yelling out of a window while they're looking for clues in her room, which is, I guess, something someone would leave behind. They get a phone call from co-worker Nina Myers that Jack has to come into work now, even though it's midnight. And their daughter just ran away, and they've been up for a whole day. But apparently it's an emergency, so okay. He's on the way to work. Kim snuck out to meet with friend Janet York. And they're going to meet some boys. Ooh, not just high school boys, college boys. Now we cut to Jack's job, the CTU, counterterrorism unit of the United States of America. In there, fancy computers. And we introduce two more co workers of Jack Jamie who's like the tech person, I guess. Because every show has to have a tech person. Other coworker, Tony. Before Jack gets to work, he calls Terry to check in and make sure everything's okay. Then, Jack gets to work. Kim and Janet meet up with Rick and Dan at a furniture store. Because furniture stores are so much fun, not at all boring. The only thing that's worse is Home Depot. But, at least there's a place to sit. So. There's that. Also, what other furniture stores have statues hanging brain? Only the top furniture stores in the county. That's it. On the background, at work of all places, because we have TVs on, a news reporter, Maureen Kingsley, is introduced. But she's coming over here because she comes in to play later. So Walsh arrives at the CTU, has a meeting with the team, and then alone with Jack. He shares with everyone that there will be an apparent hit made today. Then after, has a separate meeting with just Jack. In that meeting, he talks about that someone in the CTU might be involved. It's really relevant to Jack because he's already turned in dirty cops or detectives, both. He's the expert at getting the corrupt people out of there and then informs them that you can't trust anyone. Great. And then you're gifted with this amazing shot. And then that's it. Now we cut to an airplane. It's flying in the air on the airplane. Introduce Martin. And then some menacing music before the commercial break. After the commercial break, because everything's real time, it's 24. Martin calls Sherry, Palmer's assistant, and ensures that David will be at the photo shoot of him. But it's kind of sketch. I think we might have found our killer, everyone. Then we introduce Mandy. And here's him mention Palmer and seems very into it. After the meeting, Walsh leaves, because what else would you do? Jack and Nina have a conversation. Nina asks what the meeting was about with just Walsh. He says nothing, obviously. Everything's cool, bro. She knows he's lying. And then Terry calls. Still at home, she found three marijuana cigarettes that Kim had in her room. Three in this economy? Jeez, Kim. We cut back to the furniture store, you know, where all the fun happens. Each has paired off. Don't really show them, because who cares? Kim, you know, they're chatting. They're having a good time. She, for some reason, says her dad's dead. Clearly not. My father's dead. I don't know. She's just an edgy teen. I don't know what to do with them. Back at work, Jack's in his office, fixing his hair, like you do. Nina's back working on the main floor, because Jack is upstairs, because he's special. So Jack, is upstairs, and we get George Mason. He has information about where the hit came from, but Jack wants to know the source. 
because he's all about covering his ass, and he knows that there's an insider. So after some disagreement, Jack wants him to call his boss, Chappelle, and ask where he got the information from. Where are the leaks, bro? Where are they coming from? Give me the source. Jack goes down to get coffee while he makes the phone call. They do a fabulous little pass me the phone. Anina is, of course, super helpful. Tosses him the phone. Jack finds out he's lying. He calls him a chump. You stupid chump. A chump! Then goes to a storage locker, puts a gun in a binder, and I'm pretty sure he's just gonna file it under G for gun. Brings it upstairs, shoots Mason in the leg with a tranquilizer dart. Is he crazy? What the hell? But also my favorite part about this is when he takes him down, he knocks over like a little table and it makes so much noise. <laughs> the door's open, the blinds are half open. How did no one hear or see that? Let's do a sound test. For this demonstration, we're gonna knock over a few items, see if it's loud or not. So we have Marine Boys Magazine, season one of 24 starring Kiefer Sutherland. And of course, a pen. Yep, it's loud. Back to you. So now, Jack needs Nina's help to help blackmail Mason. Cause he knows Mason's dirty. Interesting, the last character of this episode. I know, we're pretty busy already. But, this is Alan York, Janet's father, calling Terry on the phone. The landline. <sighs> what a time. They join forces back at the CTU. Jack calls out Nina. He's, he's sensing that Nina and Tony might be, you know, you know. Jack uses the, Tony won't help me do it, but I'll help you do it, because you smoosh your booties. So with that, Nina, with Tony, getting shit done. Now Jack asked Jamie to help to get into Kim's computer because they gave her password protection to make her feel like an independent person. So they don't know her password. Anyone? Guess what her password is. Please enter your guesses now. I got her password. What is it? Life sucks, one word. Okay, if you guessed life sucks, all one word, points will be deposited in your account in the next three to five business months. We're back on to Flirt Town on the plane. Martin says, I'm a photographer. She does the funniest thing ever. She asks, oh, have I seen any of your pictures before? He grabs a magazine, flips a few pages, and he's like, yeah, sweet corn pancakes, that's me. She literally takes it and just, Doesn't even look more than a second and just throws it and she's just like, I don't know why I find that hilarious. Okay, back to David Palmer. Takes a break, writing a speech. I'm guessing about Allstate. It's fun to do that, no real reason. He's in the same spot. Patty comes in, phone call for you. He takes the phone call, obviously, because he's not a monster. And it's Maureen Kingsley. You air that allegation or anything remotely like it. He just gets really heated and doesn't talk about it, and walks outside, closes the door. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Nina's talking to Jack about, you know, the blackmail thing. And I don't remember because there's a hair on the lens and that's all I see. And I guess they're talking about morals or something. I don't know. All I saw was the hair. And then it cut and it was gone. <sighs> Thank you. Jack calls Terry and shares the password. Life sucks. And with that information, Terry <laughs> calls Alan. They find out they're gonna meet some boys at a furniture store. So, Alan's like, I don't wanna be cooped up in my house all day. Let's go. So, Terry meets up with a total stranger of a child to find her child as well. So they're going to the furniture store where all the fun happens. The kids get into a sketchy purple van, also known as a purple van, and head out. Mandy and Martin are playing hide the sausage in the bathroom on the airplane. And then the saddest thing happens. She introduces herself. She finally says her name. He's like, no, Mandy, do you want to meet up sometime? And he's just like, no. Nah. And just leaves her hanging after hiding the sausage. So now, Jack has the proof on Mason. He wakes him up with a couple of slaps. Shows on the computer that, oh, where does this mysterious $200,000 come from? Hmm, friend. So he gives him the source. And he gets out of there and says, you're gonna regret this or something. Something like that, I don't care, nobody cares. So that's how you, you know, trank someone, blackmail them, and then move on with your day. So he left. So Mandy sneaks out of her chair and then takes the corner. They're about to land. Instantly murders someone on the crew. 
No question. Martin, wallet's missing. And in his wallet is a super fancy ID that'll get him close to Palmer. So after murdering one of the crew, Mandy does an outfit change. She just casually grabs her suitcase, which I guess you could do if you're an attractive woman on a plane. Sure. Then straps something around the door, changes her outfit, pulls something out of the firing extinguisher. Guess what? It's like a cartoon version of a B-A-L-M. We're not going to say the real word because, you know, we're on an airplane right now, okay? So she places it. Martin tries to get up to find his wallet. Gets denied by one of the crew members. Stay down. Landing procedures. Sit on your fucking chair. Puts the timer. Starts it. And then puts her gloves on, which is a choice. I would have put the gloves on first and then hit the timer, just, just in case. You ever had those days where you can't just put on gloves normally? No? Okay. Mandy detonates the door. Jumps out. Bomb explodes. Guess what? They're gone. Mandy's jumping out, doing some killer. Flips in the air over the desert in the morning. Here it's good that time of day and some killer CGI happens. Now Terry calls Jack, who just shot and blackmailed someone at work. Busy day. That she's now in a car with Janet's dad after midnight looking for their kids. And then Jack even says, what if they're not there anymore? And then she's like, good question. And then the phones go out. Jack. It's gonna go help Terry ask Nina to cover. She says, yeah, great, good job. Right on the way out, gets interrupted by Tony. It says an airplane went down the Mojave Desert and then they gotta get to work instead. Cut back to kids in the van, down by the river. Ooh, wow, I am dressed like that too, that's scary. They're all in the van. Janet looks like she's on something. They missed the turn. Kim's like, hey, you missed my turn. And everyone's like, why don't you calm down? Why don't you just relax? Just relax from both of them. Relax. So I guess that's what it's like being a woman. <sighs> anyway, they of course blow through a red light. Good thing it's almost one in the morning. Terry and Alan are in a car crossing at the exact same time. Then we get the dramatic shot of everyone, 1 a.m. And that's episode one, everyone. Um, I remember when the show was airing and I never gave a crap. But um, I'm glad I decided to start now. And this is the start of our 24 journey. I've only watched season one. I started two, but then I was like, no, I need to do this. This. I stopped everything to do this. And I've seen that it only gets more insane and bad shit crazy. So I hope you will all join me on this Jack Bauer bananas adventure. Also, I mean, please don't spoil it for others. I know it's an old show. It's old enough to vote. DiCaprio wouldn't date it. So let's just not ruin the fun for people. I don't want, like, story spoilers. Like, you can know what happens. Whatever. Just don't, just don't share it. I also don't want to know. I already know too much because I've seen season one. And, whew, what a treat. What I'm trying to say is I'm the pilot and you're on this journey with me. I don't know where I'm going with that. So, anyway, special thanks to my patrons for supporting this bullshit. And I'll see you in the next one.